Feature Friday. The freshest. <laughs> So, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Dude, I'm so excited. So, we watched Bajirao Mastani, as yes, you can obviously did. tell with the yes. title. Yes. And, uh, yeah, let's do a little review. Something we don't do very often, but uh, something that we certainly enjoyed. And, and especially like this, I feel like I'm like... Verbal vomiting as well as... <laughs> no, I, I, feel, I don't feel like I'm verbal vomiting. I feel like I'm like, I don't know, being reborn or something. Because it's like you're watching something for the... for the, Like you're watching mo- a movie that's done in a way that it's never... You've never seen it be done like that before. Before, yes. Like you're, it's like seeing a movie in the cinema for the first time when yeah. you were a kid. Yeah, it's true. I totally agree. I think this, uh, to start with, like the beginning of everything, I have to say, the approach to cinematography, the directing, the, the freaking set... Yeah. Gosh, it was an experience. The music and the director was Lila. Um, yeah, I told you uh, exactly what it was. It Li- was Sanjay, Sanjay Lila. Sa- Sanjay Lila. Yeah, that's it, Sanjay Rahang Lila. Sali. Absolute genius. Yes, sir. Really, it's really interesting because, I mean, maybe uh, uh, there are some things like the, the movie isn't perfect, right? And And... Maybe that's the argument in people, like in the comments, I'm sure some people are going to be like, well, actually, I didn't think this movie was that great when I first watched it. It's not new by any stretch of the imagination. Mm-hmm. Like it happened in 2015. Um, yeah. But what I, what I find really refreshing, and it, it is, you know, the whole thing of Feature Friday, anyways, it's like discovering music for the first time, discovering yeah. it, things for the first time. Entertainment uh, from uh, other parts of the world. Uh, most specifically music. music. Now, with these movies, the only reason why we've decided to check out these type of movies um, is because they're so intertwined with the music. Now, I don't think this was like a movie. This was more like a play, like a, like a theatrical play with um, historical connotations attached to it. I don't think it was... It, it, it wasn't directed in a movie-like manner. At least in the more traditional Western sense of things. Here's what I I came to a final conclusion in my mind: the the way that the movie has been made yeah. and like the, it, and how it has been scripted yeah. scripted. It's very similar to how uh, uh, Shakespearean plays in theater are directed. So they work in acts; they don't work yeah. in scenes. That's right. So I feel like a lot of the things that you're seeing, obviously because there's a lot of um, moments, there there is a lot of constant moving. It's actually quite a fast-paced movie, but I think it's because it's structurized, like, at least in my brain, that's how I came to consume it. So like a Shakespearean theater play, like a straight acting play where it is it's done in verse and prose and those verses and proses then become acts and it's not scenes because there are scenes within the act right. but there every chapter becomes a, a, an act itself yeah i mean um so i think that's how i approached it so very very much like an like an um i don't know like an organic take of yeah Straight acting. Yeah, the, I think. Right? I, I think what I think what the movie does really well. Before we go into like the whole plot lines and all that <laughs> stuff, um, I, I think what the movie does really well. It's, I mean, it's the best movie sets I've ever seen in my life. Like the, the, Gosh, these are incredible. Let's see if I can get um, some images. And uh, you know, I'm so happy that this was the first Bollywood uh, song video that we checked out on the channel. It was a uh, Divani Mas- Mastani. Yeah. Um, but I mean, just just look like, at this. Yeah, the stuff. first scene. That's like the first scene of the movie. That's right. You watch that, and you're like, "Oh my, what the fuck!" You're. It's bad. I, I kept smiling all the way through. We did actually didn't watch it together. We watched it separately yes. this time, just to see how the podcast would come along in that manner. And then the room of mirrors is like that is beautiful. I didn't know how big of a deal the room of mirrors was up until I obviously watched the movie. But go yeah. left, go left. It says left, left. At the bottom, it said in GQ India, five of the most expensive and magnificent sets um, in in movie history in India. Let's, five of the most expensive and magnificent film sets by Sanjay Leela uh, Bas- Bansali. That looks like a dream. Basically, this, this, the whole of, of Bajirao Mastani. All of it. At least for me, it's just everything. And that one is Padmavad, though. That's that's Padmavad. Very similar because I think they're around oh, right. the same um, at times. This Go is down. 
Yeah, yeah then, the Room of Mirrors is unbelievable. Th- th- it's just brilliant. They've just, there's, there's definitely a few more movies that I love this to watch. Is, Padma is, the, is the next one. Yeah, this is the latest. I think this is from the latest movie he's about to release. Uh, or something like that. Because I know he's uh, currently working on a new movie that will release like in, in like April, I think That's I read. Sorry. And the the set Lots and the hype. trailer. Gosh, oh, when nice. I watched the trailer, I don't remember what it was. The name of the movie was, but yeah, when I watched the trailer, I was like, "Holy guacamole! Where is this yeah, set so, coming from?" So when when you when you put the movie on, but where you get it if you're watching from the UK, you just go on Amazon Prime Video, and then you just you can subscribe to Eros Music. Yeah, yeah, Eros Now, I think it's called. Eros, Eros Now. Eros now. Uh-huh. But you you just basically look up the movie, and all of them are basically there. Some of them are even included in like your Amazon Prime thing. Yeah. And then they give like a free trial anyway, so you, if if you we can watch it basically for free. <laughs> or you can just download the Eros Now app on your phone and then it's the same thing oh uh, yeah but you get all the can you do that in the UK yes 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 oh. I do so what we did was the Amazon Prime thing mm-hmm. but anyways um, which by the way if Amazon Prime you're fucking watching if you, you <laughs> if you have that feature of zooming in make sure that the zooming in doesn't like Cut take out. half of the set off, off of my fucking screen it worked in my phone no mine it, you zoom in it's your phone is so stupid bro <laughs> No, it's my screen is bigger than yours. Ah, right. That's probably what it is. So, maybe it was made for like, I don't know, smaller screens. But this is, it, it is bigger than yours. Right. So, when it just missed bits. Right. And I felt like I was missing out because I was trying to look like everything. Because they said there's so many people, there's so many, the, know, the attention to detail from the world building aspect of it. Yeah. Oh, it's just crazy. It's crazy good. But like from, right from the beginning. Okay, let's just talk from like right from the top of the experience of the movie yeah. you get introduced to like this like uh what is it uh it's not a warning it's like um <laughs> the, the part where the guy is talking and i thought it was a mistake <laughs> oh the movie. The, what is the, it called it's called that is called it's not a warning it's, it's like not a, a warning it's a um oh, for fuck's sake ballista <laughs> it's basically the bit in the movie or video it's like it, it, where like they say these uh, images and stuff disclaimer like, disclaimer where yes. they say this is you know vaguely uh, uh, based on historical facts but obviously things have been dramatized and the music obviously didn't happen in the real history oh, and it, you know and they're like obviously don't go send hate to these people that obviously you know we did they did have two historians in the yeah. in the, you know in making the plot and in the movie so yeah but the disclaimer when the when the disclaimer person is talking you think you think he's reading like a fucking a, a twelve thousand word versicle, and it was just like two two little paragraphs yeah, in yeah. English, and the guy kept talking forever. I but, was like, "Wow, but Hindi when, is so full." But when he speaks, you know this shit is gonna be serious. Like oh, it's yeah. gonna be sick. So, anyways, I'm I'm smiling all the way through, even from the beginning, because even like even the opening, the the, o- the opening of is oh, the a prologue. No, no, no. Even the opening Probably. image of like, because they, they they thank a lot of sponsors actually. Oh, yes. There's lots of sponsors at the start. Yes. But even at the the first company that sort of you know produces everything, the music in the background, you're like, oh my god, the movie is <laughs> fucking beginning. <laughs> I know it was really cool. But okay, so the first opening scene, yep. the, the first sequence, well, you get to meet Peshwa. Well, wait, but he gets to become Peshwa Bajirao. Bajirao, right? Balad. But, <laughs> well, at that point, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I guess that's how he always is known because they never fucking accept Mastani. <laughs> you fucking bricks. You know? We'll get to that at the end. But eventually. I hated the ending. I was so pissed. I was so pissed. I believed in love and they let me down. <laughs> but it's so realistic, though. Okay, but Ephraim, so anyway. you're jumping. <laughs> you're jumping. <laughs> so let's, just, let's just try to keep, you know, like a. Chronologically, oh, sure. yeah, as, as much I'm as so we excited. could. I'm so excited. I've been trying to bite my tongue because we watched it last night. <laughs> yes, we and did. And it's morning now. And we did, and we did it separately. So he watched it in his own time, and I watched it on my own time. Right. And this morning, when we were having breakfast, I was like, I have so many questions and so many things to talk about. Yeah. And everyone was like, Me too. <laughs> so cameras on. Uh, but all right. So the the opening act, the opening sequence uh, of scenes where is the first time that we get introduced to like Bajira. Bajira Jirao as the warrior, uh, what gives him the 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 reputation, right? And then uh, it's it's all a, a fast paced sequence, like caricature like 
um, green screen effects situation. And because it's happening all so quick and you're building up rapport with the character so quickly, uh, you the, the images flash by so fast, but the music... I was listening to it uh, with the speakers of the phone at the beginning, and I was like, no, I have to listen to this with proper proper amplification. So when I put on the headphones, it was like this whole, everything, you could hear the world breathing to life, you know, like it was becoming something alive. And I and I was, obviously, it's very clear that this is like a, like a prologue, like it's, you're being introduced to the book before you even start the first chapter. Right, right, right. Um, but I like the the fact that it was very ca caricature like. Uh, I don't know. You know that sequence of the war, the beginning of the war. Yeah, I think I think that probably the reason why they did that after the scene where you sort of where you get introduced to the main characters, you also get introduced that to, set the, is to the insane. to the minister. You get introduced to uh, the uh, king itself. The king. You get introduced obviously to Kashi, um, who at that point you don't know this in the story. And unless... Panth. Yeah, yeah. Panth. Pan, right? You don't you don't know this in that point of the story, mm -hmm. but um, they're already married and they already have a child. And anyways, they already have a kid. Yeah. Um, but you don't you don't know that at the beginning. You definitely know that Kashi Priyanka, by the way, first time I've ever get to see her act. Um, and yes, yeah, she was awesome. It really really difficult moments as well. And I think also given the pacing of the movie, I think everyone did a fucking incredible job. We also got to see for the first time the pickup Padukone act. You yeah. know, we, we we'd seen her like act through videos and yes. songs but never and then the person who fucking I loved was Ranveer like yeah. Ranveer was really impressive um, but anyways I think the reason why they did the, the animation bit is because that way you can kind of more accurately play historical acts good because, point yes um, it does allure more to the idea of this is a a a just a mere representation, not a documentary. That's right. So don't take it too seriously. Certainly take some historical uh, connotations it, and yeah. essence to mm -hmm. it. But that's it. It's an essence. is not a, an actual representation of things. Because this was a fucking dark ass time. Oh, yeah. And, and, and some of the things that they allude to through tongue-in-cheek comedy, uh, maybe not so much comedy, but sarcasm, satirical approaches to things, uh, were very grim and dark times. Like, you know, the scene in which, you know, just jumping to the end, uh, the scene where he is lost to insanity, the scene where she gets captured, but the child is present, the scene where she's given birth, Mastani is given birth, but there's no one to help her. Mm -hmm. uh, the huge disparity of wealth and, and uh, uh, hierarchical... Uh, um, uh, Possessions, Possessions in society. The yeah. battle between religions uh, and the, the societal implications of yeah. love and religion and and, the, and what would you call him? And Isolation and uh, and and, and uh, physical uh, repercussions of being coming from different cultures itself. War, the yeah. darkest times ever. The conquering come, of yeah. Come from war, death, yeah. suffering, murder. Blood, love, lust, hatred. So all at extremes. If you were to watch this, and this was a much more, you know, fucking brutal movie, I don't think it would be an enjoyable experience. But this was an enjoyable experience. Well, it, this not a miserable one. The 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 type of of uh, directing in the movie, and obviously the uh, the the perspective approach that we're getting to see, the bird's eye view that we're seeing. Obviously, by the way, I love that it's narrated by, from from the, it's like a third person, but you know it's Bajirao who's kind of telling the story. Yeah, that, know, was like, quite, that, was, that was quite unique. The fact that, that was a lot, really cool. A lot of them, especially uh, Mastani and, um, and Bajirao, referred a lot to themselves in the third person yeah. i think that's definitely a much that's why i think i think this is probably better approached and for a review or a podcast like this as more of a of a of an act of of a well not i mean not an act a a, a play it's more like a historical play yeah. of love with history historical connotations because i think the remarks that they make of you know bajirao never gives up or bajirao mm. never Puts his, he's never unaware. A warrior is always aware. Or when Mastani says lines like, um, uh, Mastani doesn't back down. Or, mm -hmm. or when, when the love odds are against right, us. Yeah. When the odds are against, love will proceed. And Mastani is love. Some shit like that, right? And it's like, the reason why they say that is because in some really meta 
fourth wall breaking thing, they're aware they're playing a role, but they've become the role. But they're also aware that they're playing a historical figure. That's right. Um, it's a, it, well, a, a, that's what I was gonna say. It's very similar to, uh, for example, the highly theatrical. Uh, a colonial uh, approach to how Joe Wright uh, has done his his uh, per- period like pieces right. uh, in film as well, very well awarded for that uh, for that perspective that it's it's theatrical but at the same time doesn't lose the the realness of the essence and it's it is as accurate as it could possibly be to the historical approach but at the same time you're here for entertainment so they're giving you a very vast, a very rich, indulging experience of visually and auditory. And I mean, can, can be consumed by the masses. And Absolutely. of different demographics, like look and at without, us. And without any any previous uh, knowledge of cultural inclinations or religion or anything, it's a very inclusive experience overall. Well, I learned a um, lot about culture in this. Uh, um, yeah, me too. And, and more specifically, the relationship between Hinduism and Muslim. Uh, religions, which obviously was quite interesting, and I'm sure, yeah, maybe even some people felt like they could have gone deeper. Um, but it, 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 you know, at sort of more, what would you call it, um, superficial value, it's it's enough to understand that there were conflicts historically between both mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, kingdoms and religions and societal issues, but it's not deep enough that then I'm fucking lost because this is the first time I've ever heard of this, any of these historical moments. And I do excuse my ignorance, but it's like in here, in like the UK, Europe, South America, I would have never known about in any Venezuela, of In Venezuela, we would have never known there were other religions to never, begin with. Never, mate. Like, no way. So I didn't even know Jewish people existed up until I was like, Ten, well. <laughs> and I learned it in history class. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, <laughs> it's I've never seen someone like that. No, and the thing is, like, it, as a as a whole perspective. So right from the beginning, when you get introduced to him being the commander, the the face of the nation, the the one to uh, take on the flag and you know, basically conquer the whole of India. Um, that was his attempt. I don't think he actually. I don't think it. he did. I don't think he did. I think he went insane before he could ever finish. Based on the movie. Based on the movie, <laughs> right? Uh, let us know, yeah. And also, let us know what the, if you have a link to like the actual story. That'd be quite good. I will it try was and... based on a book. There's an actual book I would no, love to not read. Not a book, it. a novel. A novel? Yeah. Well, is it is a book. Y- yeah, but book could also be non-fiction. Oh, no, 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 fictional, the novel. I would love novel. to read that. Yeah. And, Thank you. Yeah, and then the novel was... Yeah, Peshwa Bajirao, I think that was the name of the novel. Mm-hmm. By I forget the writer they said at the beginning. Uh-huh. But yeah. Well, but right, so you're you're introduced to him as a as this really big uh, figure, a man of power, a a an all consuming uh, spotlight stealer type of man, right? So like it's you're alpha male. It's the only type of like everybody would follow. No Man's one would man. question, right? Yeah. I love that when. Ke- uh, yeah, Kashi gets introduced into the into the movie. The first frame that you see is her kind of like teary eyed, teary eyed from a balcony, and she's blessing him from the from above with this sort of like devotion. But at, there there's also like this disdain to it that I I can like there's a sense of nostalgia like oh. Of longing, yeah. right? And that right there in that moment, I understood that the there had been a really long time of of knowing each other. At least I didn't know if they, I had su- I assumed they were together, but I never. You can assume that they love interest, but you can't assume that they have a kid together and that they're exactly, married. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. There's a youthfulness to it, but at the same time, there's like a. Like a longing, like a desperation behind the blessing and the teary eye welcome, uh, and I thought that was so interesting. What a great way to include that uh, that um, the meet cue of the first wife, because by this point we have already had the super iconic meet meet cue with Bajira, uh, with Mastani. No, yeah. Yes, we had. No, no. Uh, where she, where you first get intru- you first get introduced to Kashi. Uh, then he goes to the animated section. Right. And then you meet Mastani. Right. So, well, Mastani's meet you. Whew, freaking fantastic. That yeah. man is in the tent. Can I, can I as just... As the king. Can I just add? Yes. With 
I mean, it's so, the, the, the sense of longing of, of Kashi is, is so obvious that even in the act, this is why it's very meta. It's very like fourth, yeah, fourth, fourth wall break. And at some point, they even look at the camera especially in the musical pieces which is quite intriguing they they break they, they break the fourth wall so yeah, openly oddly. it's, it's yeah. really odd but it's really well done so anyways so it's it, like they're looking at you it's like you become the character they're looking at yeah so oh. def- definitely Bajirao is the man's man a warrior's warrior right the commander he is Peshva. the nation's face yeah well and, and he will become the conqueror that's the objective and mm-hmm. um you can trust him with your life. And then very fast you evolve into this is this is the only concern with the movie that it moves so fast. So quickly. You do wish because it is also two move two, two hours and 30 something minutes. You maybe hope if they would have gone 3 hours, maybe they could have built a bit deeper in personal relationships and character development. I agree. Um but because you kind of grow uh, accustomed to it, though, as as the movie progresses. Yeah, yeah. I just think they have they had so much ground to cover, mate. Like so much, so much. Because it's, it's history, so they have to jump from bits to bits, and they probably mm-hmm. even missed some really important moments. But you get introduced straight away to the type of guy Majirao Majirao has become after being at, appointed uh, the the Peshwa. The the it's like yeah, the the, the, the I guess the commander of the of the of the battalion and then you get introduced to his uh the, the most con like what would you call it the the better version of him but female it's like the same version of him but female yes his, his counterpart which is um obviously mastani and mastani breaks every rule and marks him she cuts him so that's she's imprinted himself in him that's what that mm-hmm. scene basically represents mm-hmm. well at least to my eyes is the mat because they he never heals that wound all throughout the movie that wound is always there and then it it's heals. a scar it becomes a scar but yeah. it's so prevalent but it fucking heals like it becomes a scar like on the later hour of the movie for yes. the first hour and a half it's still red it's open yeah it's, yeah, it's just red. You know when after, it's raw. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like you can see a bit of it, like uh, like the, the platelets got sort of doing their work, but then it's still red. So she's marked him, right? Mm-hmm. And no one gets too close to Bajirao because they die. Now <laughs> she managed to do that, and she changes the nature of a fierce warrior. Instead of going for his own personal gain, he will go and pursue, go for a more uh, what would you call it? Morally correct pursue rather than strategically what's correct which, in the name of love. And which is really cool though. Like the fact that he takes on the decision to fight for her kingdom, to defend somebody else's land, somebody yeah. else's uh, uh, right. She makes him selfless. I, they do benefit from it as well. Let's not fucking absolutely, take it. Absolutely, absolutely. He obviously he's a man of strategy. He's a man of uh, thinking. He's a very cold killer. That's right. He's a very calculated man. So the fact that he decides the the first n- like nudge towards that direction of defending Mastani's kingdom is actually her. He she initiates the 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 whole he sparks she sparks that initiative in him, yeah. which is 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 really cool because up to this point you see him as an unbothered, one tunnel vision man, right? So nothing can swerve him away from his direction. Not even unbothered, borderline psychopathic arrogant. Yeah, well, fantastic. Yes, because he, he is a he psycho. Is, He's crazy. Well, that guy is crazy. Say, let's 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 point blank. Address the fact that he has he was always mad. Yeah, yeah I mean from the beginning he was too too. In mass, I mean, I guess you could call people that go to war mass murderers in a general sense, even if they're writing for the right course. But I guess you know he's murdered so many people. He's killed so many people in so battle. There's no way that has sane. to do something to your head, right? Ah, um, you can even see it in the way that he approached Kashi in that really intimate play uh, uh, moment in there in, in like the bath bathing room yeah. right he is quite aggressive but tender at the same time but you can see that there's some disparity there already and she she tries very hard to appeal to please his him. likings yeah, yeah. Please him, yeah so it, and and every and every type of like very minuscule 
kindness that he projects it's like an effort from for him so everything that right there just told me this man is unstable <laughs> right from the well, beginning right war will do that to you i <laughs> yeah, would imagine yeah. and also the responsibilities pressure and stuff like that guy but yeah so but he is crazy honest, bro i would take that man <laughs> what a cool character well i It's a formidable man. He's a man, you know, regardless of whether you believe historically, I don't know what he actually was fighting for, if that's actually accurate, but the character in the movie, um, yeah, certainly an, an attractive man in the sense of a formidable man, a man willing to die for what he believes on, a man willing to make decisions. Even if they're the wrong ones, he will still stick through them. Mm -hmm. um, that's a leader, right? That's essentially what a leader is, woman or man. Those are the... And I mean, look at his mother. His mother carries the blood of his son that because so of the decisions she makes again a formidable leader it comes at a huge grave consequence but she never became flexible she always believed in what she believed in. we'll get to her in a bit because i have a lot to say about her character it was freaking beautiful then this is again there's some very interesting uh, components and we'll, we'll, we'll continue to discuss them as they go but as we're focusing on, on, on ranveer's uh, uh bajirao The character develops really quickly and then it develops so fast and then it develops fucking in a blink of an eye into a romantic relationship with Mastani. Uh, obviously, they do allude to a, to time jumps, you know, yes. so it, it is like plausible that yes. he stayed in the kingdom for a bit longer than, than love, five minutes, you know. I love how she saved him and then he ends up saving her. It was like, it was, it was like a bond. It was... <laughs> <laughs> he poisons. Oh he poisons his weapons. <laughs> what, a, what a tough guy! No, so even well, yeah. he, well, he was the well, warrior, he's right? Him, yeah. He's there to end it all. But uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, the the whole moment where you know, also the whole uh, attention so to the, uh, the the attention to the detail to the we weaponry throughout the whole movie. Yeah, I was a bit Freaking confused. Freaking cool. I was a bit confused. I didn't think it was... A, I thought it was a sword, but it's, it, they're, they're like whips. They're like metal, bloody sword whips. The, yeah, they're like knife whips. Yeah. Something like that. But yeah, so it, it goes It goes to the more that romantic so cool. sort of section of everything and beautiful scenery again when they first yes. have like a romantic encounter. Oh. And, they, and as a matter of fact, the first romantic encounter you get to see on camera is the first time in which he unknowingly proposes to her but unknowingly knowing no um, he was he was definitely giving a part of him the thing is uh, to the, her in it, in the in the religious belief uh, of of uh, uh well, culture is it in i don't know i can't remember which one it was because i think it was i think it's in yeah in the muslim belief If the man gives her... I don't think he's Muslim. I think it's just the region where she grew right, up. The kingdom right. in which she grew up. Which she says, in my, in my uh, culture, in my, in my kingdom, women are wed through the... the When the man, with the warrior, gives his dagger to uh, her. She, she says something along the lines of, by, by the... By the... Kind of like a sacrifice of the dagger to the woman. That's how you become wed. That's obviously what happens. And, and Bajirao kind of... Kind of knows this, kind of doesn't know this. He's definitely giving a, leaving a part of her, okay. his most deadly weapon to her. Mm -hmm. um, and that definitely has a significance. They do fall in love, they carry on. The thing is, in this time, what I think they're trying to allude to is, rather than um, these kind of warriors becoming highly promis promiscuous, which they probably were, but in these kingdoms, they had many wives. Yes. So instead of... Uh, because they care a lot about their offspring and of their future generation. Yes. So instead of just sort of becoming more hedonistic and just doing it and just kind of having relationships for the sake of pleasure, they would actually marry these women. Yes. Um, and different kingdoms, it, that was quite interesting in the series, in the, in the movie, because they obviously is shunned upon if you have a second wife, but in all other kingdoms, all other kings... Had, had different things, yeah. Not just two, many, because so many that even Mastani is, is part of this. She's like part of the, the third wife. She's the daughter of the third wife of, of the, the king. king. Yeah. And people are open to ask, you know, whose daughter are you? Whose wife's daughter I think, are you? I think that comes, that's when the first, when we're met upon the first uh, disparity between... Uh, the religions. religions yeah because in hinduism uh, uh, this is my perspective from 
what I just Hinduism got in the... Hinduism, you can't have several wives. Yeah, so it's monogamous, right? So, and I think... Uh, well, I don't know if that's true. Well, in, in this particular case, I'm just saying... At that time? I'm just saying based on the movie, what I, what I, I understood from the movie. I think that the, it, it was very... Uh, yeah, it was like law to be married just once to one woman. Because... Right, because look at Bajirao's father. One. Exactly. Right? So I think it's all one. It, it didn't he have different wives? No, he didn't. See, in Hinduism, like that's what I understood. Even the king all, all, alludes to it. You marry once, and that's why. That's why the, when Bajirao meets the king, and she's like, "I'm not here to dance. I'm Mastani. here." Oh, when Mastani meets the king, and she's like, "I'm not here to dance. I'm here hmm. to claim." Yeah, my husband, basically. <laughs> and uh, then she's like, "That's very brave of you, but you can't get you can get punished for that." Yeah, we we could literally kill you for making such false claims because that, that'll be like adultery or something. Exactly. Right? So therefore, I think that the whole uh, that's when we get when we face the disparity between religions for the first time, like culture time. shock, kind of. Yeah, thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, I thought that was really interesting, but obviously, what I really thought even more interesting is that even in the re uh, the romantic relationships they never kiss yeah you you don't see they kissing they never kiss they you don't, you don't see kissing once in the, the movie the most intimate thing was their embraces and that scene where they're sort of i mean they're obviously fucking but <laughs> they they what what is that um what was that soap or or it was like some it's a it's a it's a paste made out of like uh clay and essential oils so it uh they kind of do kiss kind of thing but they, but they don't they allude to never kiss well they don't allude they allude to uh the intimate intimacy. relationships yeah. because obviously they have a kid that he has two, two kids actually i can't have him by magic um but they never uh, uh, yeah it's not a very hedonistic point of view directing yeah. in the film is actually quite it's, it's very subtle it's very tasteful well, it's I very think. family oriented in that sense that when 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 you decide to escalate it's for a purpose mm -hmm. of building the gen next generation for yes. building a family it's um, not so shallow for now there could be several reasons why they did that C certainly one of them most probably because we culturally right like in maybe in those times really you know religion wise or 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 just you know the, the customs of things it, you you really yeah you maybe you didn't have a, a i can't say the word by the way that's why we're kind of jumping around because you two would fuck us i can say f but I can't, i'm serious it's so weird <laughs> i can't say the s-e-x <laughs> but i can say the yeah. i can say fucking i mean <laughs> what, what the hell google what, what the hell you two but anyway so you you don't really just do it for pleasure you do it more for a pursuit of a child. Yes. Um, so it could be because of that's so a custom. Or number two, it makes the relationship, the presence of Mastani, much more impactful because it means that she wasn't just a hedonic chase. Mm -hmm. It was love. It was genuine, true love. Well, the, it was the connection of souls. I think that the first time that he, where he, where he basically burns her with his blade yeah is that was the unification of their souls in my mind yeah that that's what i understood from that scene like they became one person it's quite interesting right like the blade that he's murdered people with it's the savior and the, it, it ignites the it ignites the start of the connection through immortal love yeah of two souls it broke that's through that's crazy the carnal, poetry yeah yeah it's it, unbelievable well, it, i think the whole movie the whole movie and it, so many beautiful uh uh parables in the in the whole telling of the movie Lots of symbolism, it becomes sure. so freaking beautiful poetic yeah. it's such a poetic film in so many ways like okay so then it goes to when Bastani dances for Bajirao for the first time in her kingdom. Joke scene in the My room of mirrors. My God! No, 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 not the room of mirrors. When she's like in white in, in her kingdom, he hasn't left yet. Right at the beginning. Oh, right, right. Yeah, sure, yeah. sure, sure, sure. She dances for him. And this is the first dance scene that we get we get introduced. Like the first music video of the movie. Yeah. Right? And I was very I was very excited because I, I already knew that the, yeah, like the, half, mus the music in this film was pretty big. But half an hour passed before you get the first number. Which I thought is brilliant music. timing. Perfect. Brilliant timing. Uh, so she be he becomes enchanted by her. 
and she is this over like dude the peak is perfect bro stunning what dancer. perfect cast she is a stunning dancer and this but like from from a technical perspective her Wonderful. lines her body language her oh uh, everything is just dreamy she yeah. is a dreamy dancer and obviously the cast she was fantastic I, could, I couldn't think of anyone better obviously the the chemistry between the three of them yeah Ranveer uh, uh, Ka- Priyanka uh, yeah Priyanka and Deepika. Deepika and Ranveer the three of them they're dynamic uh, uh, ma- match made in heaven they really nailed it down in, yeah, especially in that relationship perfection. between Mastani and Kashi that's so brutal Ah, uh, truly brutal because they were just dealt such a shit hand. They were also. I mean, Bajirao, he's a bit of a prick himself, right? It's like to be completely. If you're honest, already married, yeah, sure, maybe she was the love of your life, but it's like, come on, dog. You know your that in your passed. religion, you know that in your culture, in your religion, that is not okay. But that's why it's a story worth telling. That's right. Like he knew he was going against everything. Actually, he tells her. When, once he he tells Mastani, once you'd always be my second yeah, wife. You'll you never will, be accepted in this society. There will be nothing but shame shown upon us. Yeah, but we will be known as one, Bajirao Mastani. Oh my God, that scene broke. And he dies by that name, which is mental, right? It's like, yeah, what the fuck? poor well, Kashi. <laughs> here's the thing. So when the first when we first get introduced to the 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 three the, the re- well actually we the should triangle pro- we should probably. Uh, mention um and it's not like we're gonna go scene by scene because we'll be oh, here fucking forever but i would love to but, gosh, but some so of the most i mean we could some of the most sort of memorable moments of, of of the movie um so definitely the first dance great first number unbelievable i've never seen so many sitars in my life um and it looked beautiful then we sort of lift the kingdom and uh, they have their you know in their goodbyes they don't say goodbye because this opens the, the opportunity for a re re-encounter she goes then chases him he goes and we see the first re-encounter of Kashi and Bajirao, mm-hmm. right? Which is really interesting because you get to see how different the cultures, both kingdoms are, how different they are, how different they present themselves. Even the colors and the color palettes of things are very different. And this Very important. And then you see later the meaning on of in it. the... Yeah. Later, you know, colors like greens are more, so more related to uh, uh, Muslims. And then these, these colors of orange and... and uh, saffron color. Yeah, saffron colors uh, uh, sort of more related to Hinduism, at least by what the movie do correct me if I'm wrong as, as, as I'm saying this is just based upon the movie <laughs> no as I'm saying I'm I've never found it so enjoy I, I've learned now that this is the way I want to learn mm-hmm. about culture through, yeah. through art I don't and then obviously go in there but I don't really want to I don't like looking at the news much I don't like looking at um, you know historical books before looking at art Mm-hmm. I kind of mm-hmm. it's like you see a painting and then I want to see what their fucking painting is about. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. And then look at the legend of it, but I don't want to see the legend first, and then it's kind of how they teach you in school, right? Yes. So they teach you first the book, and then you go, and then they teach you. Okay, well now you can do your own research. Now let's yes. watch a movie after uh-huh. at the end of the term. Yeah, you know I I don't like doing that. I like it doing it the other way around. Well, um, it's, it's it ignites so much curiosity. But so, yeah, so. You get to see cultural differences. You get to see the somewhat damaged already relationship um, of Bajirao and Kashi. Kashi, I mean, definitely also these times uh, you would refer to him as a lord, right? So this also does have a disparity in social dynamics. She is basically there to please him. There's no mm-hmm. fucking other way around it. Yeah. And the, this sense of respect and admiration because he's putting everything on the line and all the pearls that she's wearing and everything that she's wearing is because of the warriors that are outside dying. That's right. So, um, uh, but I also like how their relationship's already chipped. It's like it's already broken between the two of them. And this is what I don't. This is what I hoped the movie would have dived in deeper. It would have, and dove they in deeper. dove in deeper, and they did for a glimpse of a second before his arrival. There's a very powerful scene of a wife who just lost his uh, her husband uh, to to treason. He was he was blamed to be a spy. And she carries his ashes, and she puts him at the feet of Kashi. Yes. Uh, anything. And, she, and the wife blames Bajirao for for his death. Well, of course, he's the commander. Yeah. yeah. Who the fuck else would 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 sanction such yeah, yeah, yeah. a you know such a, a fucking execution? Mm-hmm. So. But that scene only lasts like two minutes. L- less than that, it was such a quick scene. Yeah, but yeah, about a minute. I I, I would have loved if the movie would have 
bit deeper into that because that was chipping away Akashi at night time. Mm-hmm. She doesn't know if the man she decided to give a child to, her firstborn, and fall in, fell in love with, with him inconditionally is a monster. Yeah. And then her theories turn true. The rumors are true. Mm-hmm. After them, and then we obviously get introduced to Divani Mastani, the dance, the most iconic wow. fucking dance. It's the best video I've ever seen in my life. It's it the is, best scene of a movie I've ever seen in my life. It is, I think, for sure, my favorite one. Well, in top three, that's my top number one scene on the whole movie. Yeah, yeah, the Room of Mirrors. First, where he gets introduced to, it, and you see, you see the the importance of then this uh, uh the reflections and which which is more like an allure to th- there's lots of comparisons um not comparisons but symbolism in between gods most specifically obviously allah and uh, krishna and and a few others especially the lovers and mm-hmm. the, the 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 wives of these gods which is quite intriguing I, i've never looked at gods in that manner me neither um, which is super again is i feel like i'm reborn i'm learning like a baby again yeah. um so and in, in some sense, it, throughout history in science, fiction, movies, you've utilized mirrors to open up a fourth dimension, a dimension which isn't accessible to, like this isn't part of this realm. It also, I think in this particular set, in this particular movie, it represents that no secrets are hidden. No part of you is hidden, everything is seen. True, That that's, definite, that's most definitely true. Mm-hmm. But then... And I think that's the reason why Mastani gets introduced in that specific room. It's like all secrets. Oh, all rumors, all, all, all rumors are out, basically. Yes, because there were rumors already, right? So it, it, you see that. Scene well, she, 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 she goes. No, but to before, his before Ka- no, yeah, when Kashi, uh, when Mastani arrives, and Kashi's in her bedroom with all her maids and everybody in the, in the, in the, uh, in her court. Uh, there, there's this like, oh, you know, there's this mistress. Somebody has come from a different kingdom. Yes, because Mastani is already from... there. It's just the mother is keeping her at bay. Yes, it's but... Just Bajirao's mother is keeping her at bay. And Kashi, she refuses to believe the idea that he has... The evil any... eye, as they call it. Yeah, and th- that he has any attention to spare for any other women apart from herself. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that yeah, you see a lot of that relationship already broken, already falling apart, so many doubts, so many secrets. So that room of mirrors gets introduced and it's like, yeah, all things that have been hidden or in the dark are coming to light. Yeah, I, such a beautiful conglomeration of images. I think, yeah, that I mean, definitely, I I, I couldn't agree more. I I think what I was trying to say with with the mirrors is Sorry. definitely that. No, no, but I I think it's really intriguing that she she doesn't see a reflection. She sees a reflection that comes from a mirror in water. And then the 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 glimmer goes to a it's a projection. She sees more of a projection, That's right. which is how people depict their encounters with gods and spirits and 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 uh, uh, even even life events themselves. Yeah, if yeah, even some that are more kind of ethereal. Um, and that's how she gets to see Bajira for the first time in the room of mirrors, which to a certain extent exemplifies that everything she believes on is her lord, is her god, Bajirao, right? Then that comes crumbling down. After the performance of the best scene I've ever seen in my life, of a musical scene. Also, by the way, now I understood the lyricism so well. Makes like, sense, it right? made so much sense. I Mastani, feel like a fool watching this Devani. movie <laughs> after watching the music videos and doing proper reviews of them. <laughs> I know. Because I don't think we were complete. I mean, music Obviously. certainly our the area in which we're personally the best at, not the best at in the world, fucking no way. But the thing that, that's like the, I guess, the highest skill we've yeah. been able to garner. Breaking down music and all and and... and kind of reviewing it in that sense. Um, mm-hmm. But obviously, context-wise, we were so wrong, right? Well, but... Uh, so I felt embarrassed. No, I don't, I don't, because it ignited the whole curiosity. Let's find out what else is there to see, yeah. right? So to me, it's a, be- it's a beautiful journey overall. But obviously, now that you get some context, you're like an hour and a bit into the movie. Oh, when... so he punches even deeper right? in the gut. Poor yes. Kashi. And you see Kashi, and you see the mother... 
uh, uh, Bajirao's mother from the corner. And I love that she gave such a smirk. Like, when she comes into the room and the focus becomes the mother, yeah. she she gives such a smirk as in, like, I know exactly how to play this. Well, like, she knows how exactly how to put, move this pawn the mother's name? In, her, in her game. Uh, the mother's name... Oh gosh! Wait, 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 wait! I'll I'll show you guys. Um, I think I want to say. Let's have a look. Say an, Anubai. Ah. Uh, Who is the current Peshwa? Anubai, married to Ah. Uh, it's most my don't actually know. Oh, wait, just call him Bajirao Rao because well, it's Bajirao Baji. right? because they call him Rao a lot um, go down go down I want to see his early life parents was born Ra- Radhabai is the mother oh okay well, Radhabai yeah so this is 1700s fucking freaking hell so um, long ago yeah so Rad- yeah, Tam Tamvi Asmi is the actress who who played the mother. Because I think when when she so looks cool. when she looks at Mastani coming as a dancer, she's thought, oh, she's just a whore. Yes, exactly. But I also think, well, she already had those preconceptions when Mastani arrives to the kingdom. Well, she's well to begin with, she's a mistress, to right? Begin so she with, already right? knows. She Masta- also, by the way, Mastani has guts. Okay, that woman traveled far to revisit this. Rekindle this fire with vale. Bajirao. Mastani traveled alone in a horse chasing Bajirao yes. to seek savior for her kingdom. Yes, yes, yes. This yes. woman is fucking mental. She's, nu- she's nuts. She's yeah, so also chasing love. Uh, this is like cake Also, she is <laughs> crazy, right? Yeah. I also think she was also a little unhinged. But, uh, and, That's why and, they were the perfect match. Yes, <laughs> but that but that, that also gives a lot of... of uh, context to why she was so i don't know so like forthcoming with with that first performance right and especially when she knows she's in enemy territory yeah and she comes in here with the bang she, and i love i love that there was no freaking shame from bajirao he was like welcome <laughs> this yes lovely to see you again wonderful i was like this guy has no shame loves it like literally i love that there was no from his side i really like that that he didn't even try to hide her. That's what I mean. He's a man of principle. At all. And he doesn't lie. Well, I mean, he does lie because he lies about the 40,000. He lies about everything, but he didn't never lie. About love. Because in this sense, he was. she's what made him human. And here's the other thing, the difference between Mastani and Kashi. Nuts. That Kashi could never understand the love of a warrior. Yes. As much as he tried to. But she that's... made a fan of it. She wanted to understand it in one way or another. Yeah, yeah. But Mastani lived it. And has been injured by it has and that that's what i mean it's like that first scene where they fight together and then he ends up hurting her by accident um i wish they would have gone way deeper into this maybe sacrifice some of the more theatrical stunts but it's it's too much it's the, he has to keep a fast fast pace sure sure that's what i mean it's like, i'm just saying just here me so being much. stupid thinking a movie can you know be easily <laughs> directed but i wish he would have gone deeper in that sense because you everyone i think is smart enough who who watch the movie to make the connection the reason also why mastani and bajirao are sort of soulmates is because they became soulmates in, in the battlefield in the battlefield right mm-hmm. and that's something that no one can ever understand well they become imprinted with each other as they fight in battle yeah, yeah. so so it's it, it's quite it's quite a obviously i think also mastani represents all the impulses and all the uh, bravery behind a woman and Kashi represents the mother she represents the wife she represents the face of a house uh, uh, other values that women can also provide so uh, overall th- there is like obviously he found balance between love in both crazy right because <laughs> he got the wife he got the mother he got the 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 one that pr- uh, prays for his abs uh, when he's absent yep. right the, the woman that blesses him and touches his feet as, as his rival but he also got the woman that understood battle yep. that fought hand in hand with him like that also uh, 
sacrificed everything that she knew yeah for him mm-hmm. as he did for her so so he i think he got the best of both worlds selfish man but he got the be- and uh, to be completely honest from a woman's perspective i wish i wished that kashi and Maj- uh, mastani had gotten along better fuck off i do i would have been so I unrealistic do. I know I really do because I think Kashi really wanted to but she had so many responsibilities in society that she couldn't allow herself to no, do. That's not true, true. Yes, yes. She she couldn't allow herself because that that whole scene where they uh Pinga. Yeah, no, it's not Pinga. Where they dance together. Pinga. Where well, they dance together where they yes. make the understanding that this is kind of like a love triangle and uh, then well, maybe you are our best just as me. <laughs> yeah, well, it doesn't really go like that. It's it's more like remember I'm the first wife. You know, but maybe we are destined to love a man that doesn't love both of us equally. No, that doesn't love. That we cannot. That we cannot have only to ourselves. That's right. That that's that's what the that's what the whole pinga dance is. But about. I wished, I wished, because that moment gave me such a glimpse yep. of of what it could have been. But I obviously, well, this point, Kashi, Kashi couldn't give in to those, into those inclinations. Because I think she's a very, she was a very kind woman. She was very kind and kind-hearted and I think she wanted to welcome her in one way or another. She wanted to understand Mastani, but I don't think the situation socially speaking allowed her to give in to those. Yes and no. Oh, I think so. Yes, because obviously <laughs> costumes were very tough yes. and definitely she, you know, Mastani was not only an outsider but from another kingdom, from another religion, different costumes. But also because what you're seeing of Kashi is she has to hold on to her dignity because she has been stripped of, of the thing all. she has been stripped of her lord of her god the thing the allure the thing that she prays to at night the thing that she she hopes for its return the thing that her miracle and that same miracle has stabbed her in the heart and spattered it in two mm-hmm. but at the same time that it's given her her second born So it's not just a costume thing. It's like, yeah, definitely that plays a role. But she's dying slowly inside. Right, and well, when and when you have a, a she's corner... been poisoned by the blade too. The blade being budgeted out this time. True. I mean, even more symbolism. Yeah. Again, it's like, bro, I'm hot. <laughs> it, it, it's such. There's so much symbolism in this movie. It's beautiful. So, yes, costumes. Yes, but most importantly, it's the death of her. When you have a corner. When you have a corner. Uh, uh, I know. Maybe not an animal. It's not a fair <laughs> comparison, but a woman of that caliber, she she won't back down, and, and she, she will also, hold to her dignity in any way that she can. Also, this we're talking about really high hierarchical, uh, hierarchical, hier- hierarch- hierarchical, hier- hierarchical if we, uh, women from high society. The two of them. Well, she's the lady of the house. She's the lady of the kingdom. I mean, what the fuck? And Mastani is a princess. So, yeah. she, so they're <laughs> both they're both very high up in in their ranks and they understand the power that comes with those things. Yeah, his was really unique as well talking about symbolism. Now that we're, now we're on onto this. There's there's three things that are very important symbolisms or components of symbolism in the movie. Um I I might not components, articles of symbolism. Number one, it's definitely uh children. The the first, second and third born. So mm-hmm. the first born who's Nana Right, who's a right prick? By the way, that came out of nowhere. I was so confused when he gets introduced into the movie. So Nana, person, person who grew up outside of the kingdom, right? The kid grew up outside of the kingdom and realized how much of a prick Bajirao is, right? And how much he's because he's raised by the king. Yeah, right. Nana gets to be raised and taught by the king. Yes. So in the mainland. Yeah. So. That that's very symbolic because that's essentially what uh, Na- what Nana represents is your your the next generation overtaking you. But what happens when you neglect it and it becomes filled with rage and hatred? And not only that, but it's isolated from you as a father figure. Sure. Because th- here's here's an important thing. Like in comparison to, for example, Mastani's firstborn. Mm-hmm. Which is they're she's building. They're both raising a warrior together, and they implement these thoughts into the into the boy really early on. But with Nana, he gets taught strate- strate- 
strategies and he gets taught politics and he gets taught mathematics and how to be a leader outside of his... The sweat, blood and tears. That's right. Yeah. So he's a very detached... Different type of struggle, I guess. But he's a detached guy. Well, the, the, the young man that we get to meet, he's very detached and actually quite... quite um, uh, yeah, filled with rage, and you see it right from in that in that meet cue with his mother for the first time. Yeah, so definitely children, most importantly, young Nana. There, there are the two other children, right? Um, well, essentially, he's going to be called Krishna, which is Mastani's son, mm -hmm. but they go and change it to uh, something else, which I can't remember because it's, it's quite it's quite a complicated word. Well, I think it. I it, then again, I it, the names the names of the kids. I mean a lot because it, it, obviously the name of the kid is then the Muslim heritage that's right. of Bajirao. Uh -huh, and that's uh -huh. what they choose. Maybe see his offspring. Um, staring. Hey, it's on the left. It's on the left. Top left. There, buddy. Hey. I don't know. Oh, thanks. So, <laughs> children. Uh, Shamsha Badahur. Yeah, that's right. Badahur, which is... Don't, don't click on it. Don't, just hover over it. Uh, also known was a ruler. He was the son of Bajirao uh, and Mastani. So him, yeah. So Krishna, so Krishna Rao, Rao was also named. known as Shamsher Bahadur. Um, when so, they, they refused to bless him under the Hindu, uh, um, what is it, costumes. That's right. Well, mm -hmm. they ju because they keep rejecting uh, Mastani as part as, the, as his second wife because I don't think they can in Hinduism. So, or they weren't willing to be, uh, to, I guess, bend the rules in that sense. Um, and no matter what, customs, that's something very apparent. Customs and religion and culture go beyond everything else, even family, even love. And and that's essentially what the battle of Bajirao, was essentially what the story of Bajirao Mastani is. It's mm -hmm. the attempt to change the old ways for new ones mm -hmm. in the name of love. Um, and they obviously failed, but their story will be told. And uh, they will... They, they will continue their legacy in that manner because they also did have three children. Um, so, it's Nana, not his kid. Yes, he is. Balaji uh, uh, Ramchar, Ranchara. Well, he has four kids. Yeah, in, well... In, in Based in history. Right. I think... I think Search up. Because I'm just looking at that. Just click on young Nana. Oh, stuff. Sorry. Hey, well, you got to show it. <laughs> sorry. Um, go down, go down. Who is Nana? In by go up. That's, I think it's right here. Oh. They did mention Nana here. Let's have a look. Cast. Um. Young Nana, young Nana, you prick. Where are you? <laughs> Poor person is probably super nice guy. Yeah, I don't know, but I think he has another... Oh, here. Oh, here. No, no. Yeah, Baji, yeah, Kashabai and Bajirao's first son. Okay, so he's definitely his son. Good. Um, so I'm not wrong. Um, okay, so that's what that's the symbolism of the sort of generational symbolism. Then mm -hmm. you have obviously the, 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 the newer borns, the younger borns, and these represent hope for the future and also the representation that one of them will always carry the legacy of both Mastani and Bajirao for the rest of their lives. But what's most in important about the children especially uh, Krishna Rao, uh, is that he is present during the imprisonment of Mastani. And they and he actually looks kind of out of place. And they do, because it's, it's that sort of, it stands out like a sore thumb. Also, and, uh, keep that, because yeah. he's, he's also just, he also witnessed the... the, the uh, Capturing of his mother. No, 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 the, the, uh, when they try to kill her. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. That's a good so point. So he he witnessed his mom in like full on God mode. Fight, fight, fight for her life. <laughs> Literally. And um, by the way, every time she gets hit in the arm, she drops to the floor. Well, I yes, I saw that. <laughs> but I kept thinking she was dead. So did I. I thought. This but I think it's just because she can't fight with the other arm. So because mm -hmm. she has the kid, mm -hmm. so it's like she's surrendering and maybe hoping for mercy. And then obviously Bajirao comes in and he, that's when he starts going to range. You can tell in his eyes something's flipped. I love the focus in the eyes in this fucking movie. Yes. All the interactions between Mastani and Bajirao, the eyes. Uh, again, that's the third <laughs> symbolism because it's water. 
Mm-hmm. The third symbolism is water. Yes. The first one is children. Second one is water. Third one is um, uh, uh, gods. Religion. Religions. Mm-hmm. M- more specifically, gods. They they utilize lots of uh, 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 comparisons and, and stories and parables yeah. to the gods. Mm-hmm. But just to finish the first one, obviously the children. But what's interesting about Krishna Rao is the fact that Mastani, during her imprisonment, lets him go in his own feet, but he claims alliance to the kingdom so that they don't kill him mm-hmm. um, when he's so young. But it's they make the obvious reference that uh, we've been training our child to uh, for this because we knew this was going to happen, mm-hmm. and we hope that he's self-sufficient. Again, huge, huge, huge symbolism of generational knowledge, generational the kingdom will, will the story will be will told. Uh-huh. Then number two is water. This is the most interesting one and the one that I'm still trying to wrap my head around because water. And we also noticed that when we watch uh, uh, Amir, yeah, uh, uh, what's the name Amir Khan, uh-huh. act for the first time in Three Idiots. Water was an essential part of, of the movie. Um, bodies of water and then also water itself. In this, in Bajirama Stan, is also the case. You have the, the, the most intimate scene of the whole movie actually happens with Kashi and Bajira when they're in the, in the ba- when they're bathing. In the bathing um, room, yeah. He lets her know that she is allowed to relax only after she is, uh, well, after the water uh, is poured over her head and she mm-hmm. lets loose now. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're using it as a, a sensual allure, also the, the, the purification, where at this, at this sense it's like, we're about, because water is also, you know, the essence of life. So we're about to perform the act which will give uh, uh, life to our, for, well, to our second born, right? That's mm-hmm. essentially what they, what they got. Also, there's a lot of decorative purposes of water everywhere you go. Right. Fountains. Yeah. Uh, it, you see her through water reflections. Mastani is actually introduced into this godly-like figure through the through, water through water right. you see her through the fountains uh you actually have to pick through behind the curtains then the first uh sign of trouble between the two of them it, he has to cross this really troubled river yep he pays an ex- absurd amount to cross the river to meet not an her. absurd amount he pays with the jewel that represents love. No, for, that and also that represents Kashi, protection. Yeah, a gift of Kashi. So he's willing, yeah, to, and this is why Kashi's dying inside, yeah. because he's willing to put her at second best to find his true love of Mastan. That's right. So go on, yeah, so the river. And so then, the river, they, they become, they consummate their marriage to one another under pouring rain. Kashi confesses her pregnancy in the water, bathed by moonlight. Uh, so what else is there? I mean, let me see. Okay, also uh, the Bajirao and and Mastani reunite in the new house, and they walk inside of a fountain. He pulls her in. Why? And then most importantly, the last scene where he loses his life and he dies. Um, well, that's essentially what losing your losing life is. Your life. But most importantly, he loses his sanity, and he gets he's, he gets finally his heart stops working because he's too broken. Uh, it's in it's in, in a body water. of water. Yeah. And the you know kind of like the the horses of apocalypse have yes. come have come their way. They, you know the gods. I love destiny. how he called them. Yeah. Is is just the enemy there with black flags destiny Which, to him the then enemy is destiny right so you can't outrun that shit and he knew this was going to happen eventually and what he causes is his death causes rain uh, apart from all the fucking eclipse and the change of colors um we'll talk about that ending scene because there's a lot there but yeah so you got all the bodies of water um and then obviously she also passes away spoiler alert if at this point you've seen this review <laughs> of, that, of this length and you didn't think there'll be a spoilers that's on you uh, <laughs> you do I'll, not know how to do reviews without spoiling I it <laughs> oh truly it's just, I'll put it in the description be like it's also a spoiler and the spoiler is <laughs> that she's dead <laughs> but anyway so yeah so those very important uh, bodies of water so th- mm-hmm. that could represent many things I mean certainly cleansing uh, mm-hmm. in, in many moments for sure essence, as the essence of life Bodies Bonding. of water, 
But yeah, bodies of water have, you know, uh, historically been used in, in movies very well uh, to symbolize the meaning of, uh, you know, uh, cleansing, spiritual awareness, mm-hmm. connection to, to the to, elements, to, the itself, elements yeah. to Mother Nature, also conflict because there's nothing that will humble you more than knowing that being, you know, being, in, being either in the middle of the ocean or seeing a big ass wave in the beach. And you not being able to do shit about it. You're you're at the mercy of the gods, at the mercy right. of destiny. That's right. Um, but in this movie also, they use it in a way that I've never seen used before, which is they utilize it for their unification of life and death. I also think it means abundance. Oh, definitely means abundance, for sure. Because mm, it, it, it's just such a luxurious thing. No, Especially no, they're it, in the middle of the desert. That's right, and yeah. and not only that, but it, they're also showing it's it's a it's a obvious representation that they had a lot of wealth and that it was abundant in all its forms. That's right, correct, so, correct. Yeah. Um, definitely a very important one. But the one that I, I I'd never seen before is that they they use it to represent the unification of life and death. So. When there's lots of water, um, at peace, at ease, that means death. Uh, and, and then they use it for life in that scene of Kashi. Mm-hmm. Um, but then they use dryness to represent or, or the, the, you know, very, very slow moving waves or, or the bodies of water kind of finally easing for serenity. So I, I had never I'd never seen water being used in in that sense, symbolizing mm-hmm. the unification of both life and death. Mm-hmm. You you you'd see this more in the sense of there was water and then a plant grows. Mm-hmm. But the symbolism actually is the seed, not the water. That's the right. Water is just the uh, uh, vehicle uh, of that's life. That's right. That's right. Um, so that was quite interesting. And then you you have obviously the 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 the, the comparisons, not comparisons, but the parables and gods. But the really interesting one, which actually I didn't mention before, you just did, is definitely the colours. The, the colours mean a lot in this movie. Uh, and then the change, especially that last sentence that he says, that the sky will turn orange. Um, and The sun will meet the moon in the sky. That's right. And, and that will signify that our souls... No, we will meet again and we will be united in souls, yeah. Forever. Mm-hmm. We will be immortalised. Right, so, one. That's right. So mm-hmm. it's beautiful use of fucking everything in this. And my favorite movie is either Arijit's Ayat, Ayat, or um, movie uh, songs, uh, or Ishka, Bi- Ishka, La Lishka, or I'd still say the best scene I've ever seen in my life Divani. to this day is Divani Mastani. Yeah, Divani. That, that number is fucking brilliant. It was just fantastic. But okay, so in the in the whole. The, let's talk about the inclusion of music and the progression of the the the, 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 the historical scenes, right? Yeah. So you have a lot of a, a big drum field um, playback music as the, the the heightened motions of the of the movie become really relevant. Like anything battle wise is very is very big in the whole initiation of percussion. Everything is percussively driven, um, so you have a, a lot of, of, of yeah, like uh, heartbeat, like forever moving, a uh, instrumental throughout the mus- in, throughout the, the movie. But then when the songs get implemented into the into the uh, movie storyline, they come with highly mel- melodic essence, right? So mm. they don't only become a highlight. But they are emotionally driven because of the historical events. So I had never witnessed something so beautifully aligned. Yes, yeah, awesome. right. So because uh, uh, obviously you see that often in uh, musical compositions. Yep. Theater. It was very popular in nineteen forty forties to nineteen fifties Hollywood, where it was all very driven by the music, the choreography. By the way, the choreographies are fantastic. Well, the 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 way I would love to see the choreographer in a bit. I'll, I'll, the composers I'll were Sanjay, Lila, Lila. and San, uh, Sanchit Balhara. Bal- Balhara. Sanjay Lila Bansali and Sanjit Bal- Balhara. So the the whole approach to the musicality of it is just so 
Absolutely. absolutely genius. It's genius. Every single piece. Like that uh, Bajidao scene where he wins that last, uh, uh, the last conquer before he goes insane. Uh, that he's like out there with the tiger and and he's like, I wish you become my friend too. Oh, the south when he goes and speaks to the yes. southern kingdom. Yes. That's not his last battle. His last battle is when he goes north. Yeah, but and then he gets that arrow stuck in his leg. But that's when he's totally deranged. Yeah, he's but already wild. He's yeah, already true, true. Deranged. He's already crazy. Though. But uh, yeah. uh, but that that win of the south was such a big because they were out, out number. He had to use intellect. Yeah, yeah, and they have it right. And they have that musical number right where they oh all go crazy. Oh my god! Yeah. That when he, they, that celebration, I have to talk about the choreography there because it was so freaking simplistic, but so clean. It was so clean. It was so synchronized. I I was reading about how long these musical pieces took to be filmed, okay. and Pinga was filmed in a te- ten day process. Whoa, really? Yeah, so Whoa. actually really long the fuck? for the the uh, the the musical uh, pieces in the movie, and Devani Mastani was also filmed in a period between seven to fifteen days. Of filming that shot, that that only that section alone. Why seven to fifteen? Oh, that's what approximately said on on Google. There was no right. factual to say that's exactly what it was. But the Bajirao celebration dance, gosh, the play with the dirt on the ground, the play <laughs> with the uh, the um, elation and so manly like. Oh, it that that was. Such a brilliant piece for I me. To, yeah. it, it was like seeing a lion become the best. I don't know. It was like seeing him at work. It was. It was. It was fantastic. Also, you get to see how great of a dancer Ravin Singh actually. Is. I was so happy to see him dance for the first time. I was like, oh my I'll god, see, this see him guy is act. Sorry for the first time. This guy is fantastic, Ranvi- uh, Ranveer Singh. Yeah. yeah, he like he's brilliant not only in his acting, but. The embodiment of dancing itself. These guys are so well-rounded as, as talent. He was, he was also the perfect cast for that, yeah. Yes. I, I think so. I think... Who's the choreographer? Search that Yes, up. yes. Bajira Mastani choreographer. And I, and I think, like, overall... Th- these were probably... Yeah, again, some of, some of the best, like, scenes I've ever seen in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, Acting-wise, what was really interesting is... Um, because obviously you are... You, you're, you're passing so many moments, so many acts all at once. Mm-hmm. Um... You actually, I don't think you get to see the best of each character. Yes. Um, yes. Because you're trying to fulfill all these different moments, historical, impactful moments that will also look good on camera and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But I, 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 I loved that relationship, and I think it was so well between like um, Bajirao and and Mastani and Kashi and Mastani. Mm-hmm. All those moments are brilliant. Like the yes. acting is fantastic. The moments where the king is present and like that first opening scene. The acting's truly unbelievable. The only... Well, who's the choreographer? So, the choreographer is Remo, Remo. de Souza. Okay. That you deserve... Oh, is he? Where is he from? I don't know. Let's have a look. That you click so, on Bajirao. Yeah, because that's the where, the, where he comes in. Okay, click so on him. Rem, Remo. Where is he from? Born... Who's born... Uh, in Kolkata. In no, no, no. In Ramesh, Kamataka. Uh, Kamataka, India. Bangalore. Leslie de Sosa. Because with that name, the Sosa, maybe it's very Portuguese. Portuguese. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so the only thing that I think uh, were maybe moments that they're not very memorable for me. It's like the battle scenes between like uh, Mastani when she gets first introduced. Um, that, that battle scene when she is the one kicking ass. And even when uh, Bajirao is kicking ass, it's like they're a bit over the top, right? Which I think obviously they're trying to exemplify and exaggerate everything that happens in war, mm-hmm. well, which that's dramatized. fine. Yeah, dramatized. The which... slow mo uh, uh, scenes. There were so many slow motion yeah, lots inclusion of... in the, in the I, scenes. I think that is like, it was all right. It's not bad. I, it's not very memorable, weirdly enough, because I love action movies and war movies, but that wasn't very memorable. But you to know me. why? Because the whole focus of the movie is the romantic relationship. But still... the, the, the conflict. Between one end and the other. But they play, they, they, they put so much effort though into those scenes. Oh, because, definitely. Because, you know, they have to, that, that's the only depiction of war, you, you know, those are the only depictions of war you get. It's quite the, little compared to what, how much war it actually was. Like, for example, I think a much better scene of war was 
you know when he goes berserk, he goes crazy and oh. he starts whipping all his things like that? Not that moment. The, the moment after where he speaks to his brother. Mm-hmm. That, that 30 second scene told me everything I needed to know about war. Mm-hmm. It's deranged, the strongest warrior. It's detached. It's, no, it comes at incredible sacrifices. Unbelievable. Sacrifices that the human brain and human heart cannot ponder. Love, complete and utter blind love. That comes at the price of that. You want to go to war, fine. Be willing to sacrifice that. Be willing to be, be, uh, be willing to have your soul taken, taken from you. stripped away from you. But not your brain. Mm-hmm. So you still be, a, you'll be a walking corpse, basically. You'll be a zombie. That's what he becomes. And that was 35, 45 seconds. Yeah, I know. I didn't need the fucking minute of him whipping, <laughs> whipping all this swords. stuff. Maybe that's a really pinnacle moment. Maybe was, that's what he was known for in like yes. your historically and stuff. Yes, I, re- I read it online after. So after I watched the movie, I was like, okay, I got so many questions about so many things. So Is that what he was known for? So he killed like 70 million people. Like so you know that scene where the king is like, here's your weapon. And he's like, he gets cold because th- there was like some type of like wrong negotiation or something. And he get, he goes to meet the king. Yeah. Right. Uh, and he uh, gives him this sword. Yep. Right. That's a reward. So, yes. Amongst those, uh, the, 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 his most iconic known for weapons were gifted by the king. And some of the, uh, and the whipping swords actually were done by like, by the king himself uh, his his uh, uh what is he called the iron hammersmiths the, ha- the, no, no, the, the the iron smiths what are they called yeah the people that make the swords blacksmiths ah uh, so so it, but it, those those blacksmiths only worked for the king yeah, of course yeah. so the 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 whipping swords become an accessory gifted by the king. And that's why they become iconic. Yes. Yeah, that, that. And he, he gets known, that reputation for the... The... Hug, the yeah. The, those, those ribbons. They, they become absolutely freaking iconic and feared in the whole of the nation. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty fucked. Imagine the range on that as well. And, and, and the thing about this, I love that scene where Mastani gives him a blade as a gift as well. And then she... Let's talk about that scene. She... She... Um, marks cuts it. her finger. She yeah. marks it. Well, because she's going to mark her forehead, mm-hmm. um, his, forehead. his forehead. And it's like, that's how sharp those blades should be. Like, you just pass your thing, or would be, not should. I don't know anything about swords. I'm not a swordsmith. But I mean, would be. You literally pass all this, and that's your thumb basically half gone. You know what I mean? Yeah. So imagine that shit. Like that. So what I'm saying about the war scenes is they're not, they weren't bad. They weren't great, but they weren't bad. Like, I'm sure we can all agree we've seen better war scenes in movies. Yeah. Um, and that are less dramatized, actually, and more brutal and oh, heavy. Like, ahead. look at look at Gladi- Gladiator. Those are some of the best war scenes you can ever fucking look at. Or battle scenes. Mm-hmm. Um, what what other one? Uh, There's plenty. Yeah, probably Gladiator is probably one of the best examples. Because I think that that's, that's what he was trying to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but it did the best job in that 45 second where the, he told enough environmentally what, what the fuck happened there and how crazy he went. You know what I mean, and the blood in his eyes. He 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 has he has blood blood clots in his eyes, or his bursted blood vessels in his eyes, and out of anger and 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 and, and frustration, and he's wounded everywhere. I'm glad they fucking showed that because I was gonna say if he got through this unscathed, fuck me. If he got through that and he lived, that That's would have been bollocks. That's already crazy, yeah. Um, but that that was the best war depiction there not the previous scenes uh, the second thing also maybe I didn't enjoy as much was maybe like yeah there was also a scene of the sword where um, the Pika is like doing a sword scene yeah I thought that was weird that was probably the weakest scene there not because maybe you know and the thing is that she's a great she's an outstanding dancer I just think she didn't have enough time in the art to settle with the to sword. settle with it yeah. and as a matter of fact did you need that I don't think you did I use think- the dagger the tiny little dagger that but would have been maybe I a bit better. I think that was that was just the again. I understood why the scene was included. Not the in scene where she's act. fighting with a kid. That was brilliant. That was really really good. That was fantastic. The, the fu- scene where she first Shadows, arrives to where the she sat where she's shadowing when she first arrives to uh, uh, Bajirao's kingdom, which is I. It was the frustration. She needed to mark her territory. That I true, understood. Yeah, true, 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 so true. I understood what that represented. It wasn't my favorite scene. I actually thought it was very strange. Yeah, execute. <laughs> not, 
it makes sense because like, what I mean there's lots of strange things but if they're se- executed really well and the symbolism is you know aligned and congruent it makes sense it was yes. just the execution I don't think was the best but I understood what he stood for yeah. uh, but that scene where he finally goes to the north when he accepts after he has given up on the title as after he has already uh, accepted that if he if they don't accept Mastani he will not take on the the burden of ruling the 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 battalions anymore I think no turbans uh, represented wisdom now I do well there you go so after he gives it up right after he gives up his title his his uh, 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 his privilege and uh, and everything that came with that responsibility after he literally strips away everything that he stood for everything that made him himself uh in order to make a point in order to stand for love <sighs> i mean uh He's also, he goes with that title, the bollocks. It's like, he you did. won't let me fucking, you won't let me claim my wife, but you wear, you wear their pearls. That scene was awesome. That was Where fantastic. he's like, you fucking hypocrite, basically. That's what they yeah. call him. You wear that. Yeah, you take off that thing and you give away your rank and you give away your kingdom and all that stuff. But yet you don't, and you do, you're flexible in that manner. But you're not flexible in the manner for, for, for what I want in terms of love. Mm. I'm not even, he's not even trying to rule anything anymore. He's just trying to fucking have the woman he loves not be murdered and be part of his family. Yes. I, I adored that. That scene was so impactful. Like, I, when he gave up, he was like, okay, you don't, want, you don't want to give it to me? Fine. I won't give you what you need from me either. Yeah. Like, what I am, because that's, the, that's what he represented. He wasn't stripping away... Just, just a physical title. The no. power. No, no, no. He wasn't stripping away from from the perceived idea of who he was in society. No, he was stripping himself away because that was his identity, mm. right? That was himself. I thought the ending was gonna be they like he becomes like a farmer or something, <laughs> and, then, and then yeah, he like leaves the kingdom because he gets like you know because he's like, well, I don't want to be part of this fucking thing. <laughs> Fuck all you, and then uh, I, I'll go live with my son and my son. I thought I was going to be the ending. I literally at one point thought it was going to, you're going to see me with a sigh or something. Just sort of, you know. Guttering the hair and shit. Yeah, stuff. I literally, because I, Ballyhat was see, watching it before me and then I asked, is the ending shit? And, and I, I was, was like, like no. 30 minutes in and she's like, no, it's, it's actually like, really no, cool. it's a really cool ending. Yeah, you said that. You said it's a really cool ending. I so, did. So I'm thinking it's a good ending. It is a great ending. No, it's fucking not. The it's dead. fantastic. Poor kid. Well, that, that's true. And they died of a fuck's sake. Dude, it's, it's the thing. How long was she imprisoned? So long. I think she dies of an in, in, in what is it? In an in an inanition. <laughs> what is it? Where they die of like dehydrated and like hunger? What is it? What's the word for that? Malnutrition. No, it's not malnutrition. Malnourishment. No, it's that dehydration. Even. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> there's an actual word for that conglomerate as a whole. It's like in a in a in a in a in a in a Like I'm drunk annihilation. Or no, it's not annihilation. That's a complete distraction. No, 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 that's not it. But okay, anyways, we'll we'll get back to that. Uh, but yeah, when he strips himself away and uh, everything's gone, and he has become this normal person, like he's faced the 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 the, the consequences of his own actions. Finally, he's ready to. He's ready to right. Uh, his his battalion comes to him yep. and beg beg for for his leadership right beg for him to, to return to his true nature that's right and and i and i love that but you know what i i loved the most was the departure scenes from both of his wives right so you have a really sour a really a, a really broken Kashi. That's right. She doesn't let him return to his own house. That's right. What the fuck? She was like, you promised me happiness and you will not step within these walls. Therefore, you will not step within it. That scene where they're blowing off the candles. Again, great representation of light Letting and hope. go. Oh, and letting go. Oh, it was such a... That was his death. goodbye. This is it. This is you're killing me as you are asking... As you are uh, asking for my blessing before going to war. That's right. <laughs> you have literally, in, uh, totally, completely annihilated all the light within me. Tough. Of and I and I tough. and I loved I loved how sour and how completely distraught she was. So, but and Krishna, she wasn't she wasn't she wasn't uh, just angry. 
Nah, she was him. torn apart, man. No, she was like this. This pain and this mes- misery had grown old with her. That's what I mean. It's like I wish they would have t- told us a bit more of a like the, the time stamp. The time yeah, stamps, yeah. Like what, how long had that been? And also, um, so long. <laughs> she mentions uh, the priest. Um, I think now in Hinduism you call them priests as well. Yeah. Um, that's what I mean. I'm just learning. Um, she mentioned that he was telling a parable, the story of Krishna. And his wife. And his wife's, right? So, if Krishna is a Hindu god, right? And quite a playful one, because in one of the songs she also says that you're playful like Krishna, mm-hmm. like that. And it's like, okay, so if, if Krishna, if Krishna's a Hindu god, right? So, I don't know, I'm asking. I think, I think it's so. like the blue uh, god. Fella. I don't know. Listen, I don't think it's a fella. It's like, uh, maybe he might be a guy. I, I'm not, not I too sure. Krishna I don't know if gods uh, have, have a specific. Krishna. Uh, or they sort of just embody everything. God, god of Hinduism. Can yeah. it be a god for anything else? I don't Krishna, think so. Krishna. Sankris Krishna. Sanskrit. Uh, one of the most widely revered and most popular uh, of all Indian divinities. Oh. Worship as the eighth incarnation. <laughs> Avatar or av- Avatara. Avatara. Of the Hindu god Vishnu, oh Vishnu, and uh, and also a supreme god in his own right. So you click on it. Right, let's have the stories. I know. I want to see the um the pictures. The pictures, oh, okay. Or how people depict Krishna. Krishna. It might be a woman. Oh, cause, but the see you you see it blue, blue skinned here. Yeah, I don't think you but can I say woman know. or man. I just think yeah, it's just a, it's think, just a god. Yeah, I don't think they have. Could be a guy. Per se. Could be a male, who knows? I, I, man, I'm so... I think it's a guy. Could be, right? Because he had wives, right? Yeah, he had a wife. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think it's a... It's a male figure. Yeah. Has Krishna... Yeah, I'm not... Yeah, I have no idea. I have no idea. See, here, here, he's singing to... To his wife. To his wife? One of them. Greeting... Oh, greeting so look, and, and that's what the peacock... Um, um, feather means yes. at the beginning. At the beginning, ah. right. Right, right, right. Just, yeah, it's everywhere. Gosh, I, I am... But also, cow, that, is, that, is, a holy is that what the evil... Because an evil eye looks like that as well, right? Like, that's what people call it. Like, it looks like the peacock thing. The peacock feathers. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know. Look, here he has well, like got a, four arms. And a, a and tail. A tail. And uh, the face of a rhino? Well, that's an elephant. Ah, oh, an elephant. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Here is there's a woman illuminating a man. Ah, uh, right. So maybe he just represents every because he, well, he's a god, right? So he represents yeah. everything. Well, I suppose oh, many of the gods apparently there there. Are... Well, he's eighth, the eighth reincarnation of Vishnu. Or sh- sh- how how is it addressed in the on Google? Let me just go back to all. It's one of the most. Worship as the eighth incarnation of the Hindu god Vishnu. So he's Vishnu, the ultimate. He is worshipped. So I think he it is a male figure. Oh, he. Yeah. Yeah. Must be a he, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I thought, what the fuck? Yeah, they were saying he had wives. Yeah, yeah but... Apologies. No, no, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so... They were telling those stories, right? Of how, you know, he had his wives and then he was... He, he, but people always remembered the mistress. Yes. Never his wife. Fucked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that's what I mean. He... And that's the confirmation I had that she, in her world, apart in from her, world. in Cash's world, apart from cultural and customs, her God, the person she worships the most is by Jirao. Yes. And this was the death of her God. A true. Is the God incarnation is dead of yeah, yeah. For her. <laughs> and she's, you know, she's closing out all the candles. Well, that scene where she bids him farewell. Yep. It's ba- she doesn't really, she's a fuck off mate. Yeah, well, but he is looking for comfort. He is seeking a comfort. He's seeking reconciliation. Uh, and he doesn't find it in her. He actually becomes united with Mastani yeah. after that, though. Because it's, it, she goes to find him, like she always did. Right from the beginning, she always looked for him. Yeah, so now there's, uh, to Zanison, there's one. <laughs> yeah, it's... In a really fucked up way, now is, there's the one. It's wild, though. Then when she gets in, uh, she, she gets imprisoned, when Mastani gets imprisoned, and the kid is taken with her, and yep. they get taken in this, like, really long hike 
up in this like side of a mountain. To, oh no, to... it's just the the chambers of the kingdom. Right. Where you imprison. Okay. Prisoners. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah. I I I remember watching that whole scene and thinking. They didn't need to show you the pilgrimage. They didn't need to show you how she walked to her own demise. But I thought the fact that they did is like a confirmation that she knew the end and that she was given into because it she didn't fight it. it she 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 had al she had already seen it well, in her mind. Also, you fight when the consequence of not fighting is graver than the consequence of if you did mm. but if she did fight they but take away was, her kid but there was and they gonna kill be, the kid there was gonna be death regardless no because look she played it smart the kid uh, claims alliance to the kingdom doesn't mm -hmm. he you know he he says and the king is you know and i will go by you know what i mean he doesn't he doesn't say oh but you know my standing forever <laughs> And then they fucking chop his head off. You know what I mean? He's, like, he's a smart kid. I, I really like the vulnerability of that depart departure. Brilliant acting by the little fella. It was, he spoke like three lines and I was like, give him an Oscar. <laughs> uh, because it, it was it, that vulnerability there. Because the, there was some type of like dependency. Obviously, you're seeing a very small child. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but you see... Buchito. <laughs> that means how uh, You're seeing a four or five year old, right? A kid who needs, depends on a mother. Uh, and he is glued to her like no other's business, right? And I'm pretty sure that kid was in the brink of death as well. Cause he was, yeah. yeah, because he was kept in the cell with her yep. uh, for a really long time, I would think. Um, so that whole moment, which is like, yes, okay. Remember what we did. Yeah. And the kid switches in this mode of like, I'm not crying, I I'm love, not needing. I love that sentence she said. She said, what is fear? And he says, another name for the feet. And I was like, oh, wow, my kid, God. Brilliant, mate. <laughs> you don't understand that now, but kid, when you grow up, you're going to be the greatest leader the world has seen. Same as that sentence from Dune. Is, um, search up that. Mm -hmm. But the box scene in, in, in Dune. Box. Yeah. Box scene, scene. Dune. Dune. Yeah, yeah, it comes up first. Put uh, uh, what is pain? Put put um dialogue. Dialogue, dialogue. Let's it's see. one of the best dialogues. <laughs> what? I'm not knowing how to fucking go down. What? Go in the Scripts. transcript. Yeah, I love that dialogue. Scrub so though it's loading. It's like what is fear. And that but like, nothing but the slow death of the mind or something like that. Dreams of an image. I don't know how to Dreams find of it. messages from the deep, my planet, these outsiders. He goes like in pain like a motherfucker, full dress military. <laughs> Ach, you know, they Almost. really did smile, I'm smiling there. Do Whoa, that what the, this is the whole I don't know. I think so. Oh yeah, my god, no, let's not. Let's just watch it on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> What is pain? That's the original. Now put the new one. Put the new one. The box scene. Put the new one. Wait, wait, wait. Turn this mother baby on. Put the new one and then we'll put the Bajirama Stani one as well. New, 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 new one, new one. Just search it up there. Oh, okay. Not dialogue, just, yeah. Box scene. 2021. Is That's this one. it. What is ah. in the box? Pain. Remove your hand from the box. And you die. And you die. What's in the box? Pain. It, it was like the really, really slow moment. <laughs> okay, the person talking. Hey, hold on a sec. What the what fuck is, is it? I what can't remember it? what it. Because she what? tells him. She tells him like, you, like you. I'm trying to test that you're not an animal, so that because an animal will chew its own arm off bef before being willing to. Uh, oh his, yeah. And then and then she she says, pain is nothing but blah 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 blah, blah but slow death of the mind. Oh yeah, uh, I think fear, it's, fear. That's it. He has to control is, fear. It's nothing but the slow death of the mind. Yeah, something like that. I love that sentence. But anyways, anyway, so the yeah. Bajira one might just overtake in that. Yes, I think what so. What is fear? Another name for defeat. And this kid and he's like says a three-year-old. <laughs> yeah, this kid says it with all his whole chest. Yeah. 
And he doesn't even bid farewell his mother. He just goes. He knows Warrior. his task. You know? Hey and man, I fucking love this movie. No, talk about the death scene. Talk about the ending scene. That freaking ending We scene. We did. Where he, no, no, no. Because it's important, the fact that they die at the same time. Of course, yeah. We didn't talk about that. Oh, did we not? No, I don't think so. Okay, so the 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 the, the ending yeah. situation when they both die, when she I love that there's like this. We have a meeting. Just surreal, ah, yeah, surreal, surreal, oh, surreal uh, moment where they're like so connected, they're so aligned yep. that they know they're dying at the same time. Yes, like he he knows that she is in the brink of death, and that's the that's the reason for his affliction. And then I don't she think... becomes aware. I'm just saying in my mind that's what it is. And then he be- and she becomes aware of his death mm-hmm. through this like psychic connection. In the movie, they did such a brilliant task at that. Obviously, we know that that's not no, historically I... accurate. No, accurate, but I think but what they were both mad, probably. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, what would be the point of me saying like, yeah, that's not historically accurate? It's like, yo, you fuck it, you know. I'm just saying that I think what it represented more, the fact that they died at the same time, was not that they. I mean, it is likely that the cord of love was still uh, so strong that you know you can kind of feel when something's wrong when you love someone really a lot. Yeah. You know? Um, it, that that that's probably what they were alluding to, I think. But may, maybe what they were alluding to as well is. It was when they both they accepted around the same time in around the same times that there was no other way to be reunited but death. Because mm-hmm. she she didn't die; she basically surrendered. True, she stopped fighting, mm-hmm. and so did he. Because mm-hmm. he fought, but he couldn't win that battle. Unfortunately, he fought the mystic creatures. He fought destiny, and he couldn't win. So they both surrendered at the same time. I think that's more what it meant. Not yeah. that one died and then the other died because the other died. Yes, uh, but they were so aligned. They were so connected. Or I totally agree with yeah, you. Yeah, I think I think it was more. We're both fucked. Yeah, and 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 the understanding, the knowledge of like yes, as as you go. The, no, the only way to be together again. Forever, for certainly for yes, eternity. Yes, I, I do wonder uh, if that's true. Like, oh, if they, you yeah. know what I mean? If there would be a way one day we would be like, is there something after? And we can all see it. Maybe people will start jumping off a roof. Yeah, maybe that shouldn't be the thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he, why were you mad? Here's my question. Why were you so not pleased with that ending? Uh, no, nah, it was a good ending. It's a really good ending. So why were you? So I just wanted a happy ending. Emotionally this guy, invested. This in guy's basically. I mean, I don't know even real life. He was a hero as much as they painted him because I actually don't think he was. Don't, probably a merciless, probably fucking murderer and a crazy but guy. But who knows, right? Well, no, maybe he was a bit of a hero. Um, but and do send me more information. I will be. I will check out the Wikipedia thing. Um, but I just thought after sacrificing so much for something you believe on, and mm-hmm. then finding love. Yeah. And a child, and and uh, a woman that genuinely accepts you for who you are and understands you, and you're willing to to bend, you know, to to create better beliefs mm-hmm. or build upon those beliefs. Maybe who 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 gets to say is better, right? But you get to build upon those beliefs, and you're willing to to uh, create a movement in that sense of you know maybe love should be above all, and we should unite religions rather than uh, separate them and kill each other over it and mm-hmm. um, we should unite and maybe win this war together mm-hmm. um sort of the sense of unity if you're willing to do that and then the kingdom just doesn't accept it i just thought i literally thought the ending was gonna be him just sort of leaves <laughs> becomes poor or some shit like that which i mean that would fucking suck <laughs> uh, to be honest that is such a terrible ending <laughs> and then he has his kid and then you just get this little scene of like his kid maybe playing with like a buffalo or something and then <laughs> And then you get the girl, you get the pika, you know, sort of, oh, come on, little little Krishna, you know, let's go home. And then the dad, mom, where is dad? And then, <laughs> then they sort of allude, they sort of allude that maybe he's dead or maybe he isn't. And then when you think he is, you sort of get this slow shot up. <laughs> or, oh, sorry, a downward, a downward. Oh, yes. So the representation of the gods by the sun in an orange-like sunset. Mm-hmm. And you get him just sort of chopping away. Flowering through. Flowering through, sweating. Um, having having remarks of war, but he's won the battle that mattered. Uh, okay. <laughs> Ephra, 
Ezra for film director. <laughs> no, but literally, seriously, yeah. um, brilliant, brilliant ending. It's, it's a really good movie. It's, I loved like, it. It's like one of the best movies again I, I've As seen epic. in terms of uh, stages, music. As certainly the best be. music movie I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, it, it's fucking incredible. I this music is the music that I, I will have on my playlist and yes. I do anyways. Yes, yes, yes. So very impressive. I've never said that about a movie and I don't think many people have said that about movies apart from like in the recent years that like, well, let's use this, the judgment of 2010 to 2020 because this movie came out in 2015. Mm -hmm. So I don't think people have had that since The Greatest Showman. Interstellar. Uh, in, yeah, true, true. Interstellar. Interstellar. Um, mm. But m music that was in the movie like integrated part like as an isolated item you have to think of theater yeah you would have to think because hollywood theater. doesn't do that and i don't think i like the 2010 to, to 2022 oh, theater. It hasn't been, uh, musical it's been very so far. apart from i think the greatest showman did a great job at that it's been a few um, as well uh not billy elliot the, the one where it's like uh, the wicked Wicked. There's yeah. not a movie for Wicked. Not no a theater. If I say if you say theater wise. Ah, oh, if you say theater, that was then plenty. translated into film. Film. Because mm. Wicked does have a movie, right? No, it doesn't. Didn't Disney make one? No. I with don't that think girl. So. Um, okay, I'm talking shit now. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. Yes. <laughs> the I bitch in the woods. So. What is that? The oh, witch in into the woods. The woods. Into the woods. Is that a movie? Yes, it is a movie. Came out recently, right? Yes, it did. But uh -huh. I think the, I think the movie was great. But not the music. But I, I prefer the the stage take. Okay. Vale basically said shit. No, I didn't know because it has Meryl yeah. Streep and James. Well, let's Gordon. say a very bad movie. No, no, I'm not. James I like Gordon. it. Yeah, he's the, in that the... movie. He's the baker in that movie. And so is Chris Pine. Is one of the princes. James Gordon, the guy that does the yes. interviews. Yes. Oh, nice. He He's acts. a great singer and actor. Yes. What? Yes, Ephra. Wow, good on him. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> He's a fantastic singer. So you tell singer. him, he's like, Jimmy Kimmel is in the, the Greatest Showman. Great actor and dancer. It's like... <laughs> Wait a second, right? Like, no, no, no. He, that, that's his background. He was an actor and singer first before he was a show businessman. Well, host. Host. Well, good on him. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen... That was by Jidal Mastani. Wow. A little podcast, and I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the review. It was I, such a fun thing. And I, and I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Uh, again, this is not, we're not the best at this. We're, sort of, we're just like talking about <laughs> As it. As you can see. <laughs> and uh, sort of breaking down uh, to the best of our ability. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. It's been one of the most pleasurable musically and uh, historical movies that I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, and I feel like I'm being re reborn again. I'm learning because cinema is so different Gosh. there in India. It's so it's done so differently, and it's beautiful. It, it's Ugh. it's like watching. Yeah, it's truly like a, a completely new experience. Yes. That um, unfortunately the West hasn't. I, I had never even imagined that I would be able to experience it. Yeah, because mm -hmm. they never mentioned it. You just sort of hear about it, and then eh. You don't. I don't think there's ever been an introduction. I knew before. about Bollywood in the UK, but I didn't know it was that good. I didn't even know. I I, I knew about Bollywood because I had to do a lot of casting calls for it. Um, but never I, took I did, the time to actually watch. I no. no just sort of study the characters and all that. Yeah, stuff. I kind of yeah. like study for the role and whatever they needed for the casting. Um, and I actually really enjoyed the 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 way of directing casting. I calls. like this it move was, they do when it's something funny. I know. Oh, when they're giving you sass. Really? The, yeah, there's like this. Yeah, there's a lot cool. of this. It's so cool. But the dancing. Fuck, that woman. The music. Pika is unbelievable. The eyes. The slow Anyways, motion into the eyes. Ladies and gentlemen, hope you enjoyed. Goodbye. Let us know what you think and what should we do next. Goodbye.